Thank you, VP Matheson. Madam Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduating students, and honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure and honor to be able to present to you Dr. Joseph Strauss. Dr. Strauss brings a lifetime of extraordinary achievement in technology innovation, leadership, and business success to the telecommunications industry. He co-founded JDS Uniphase, Fitel, or excuse me, JDS Fitel in 1981, and was instrumental in its merger with Uniphase Corporation in 1999 to become JDS Uniphase, a worldwide leader in fiber optic communications. He retired as CEO and co-chairman in August 2003 and now holds the title of Founder Emeritus. Prior to JDS Vitel, Dr. Strauss held various research and management positions at Bell Northern Research Limited and Nortel. When his studies at the Czech Technical University in Prague were interrupted in 1968 by the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia, he was an undergraduate at the time, Joseph Strauss forged ahead. He immigrated to Canada that same year and completed his education at the University of Alberta in, with his BSc degree in 1969 and his PhD in physics in 1974. Given Dr. Strauss's notable past and present career, it's not surprising that he's been an honorary doctorate at a number of institutions, uh, most notable was his alma mater, uh, University of Alberta. Dr. Strauss also has numerous usable patents refereed publications, and other public honors to his credit. He's involved in several, several charitable organizations, and we are most proud of his involvement as co-chairman of the successful Ottawa Hospital's Legacy Campaign. I was recently talking to a colleague of mine in the Department of Chemistry, and he said, we were talking about Joseph Strauss, and he said, now there's somebody who gets things done long before yesterday, and it's a good thing, because he's able to be with us today and we can celebrate his achievements, and he can help us in celebrating the achievements of our graduating class. Madam Vice Chancellor, in recognition of an outstanding contribution to information and telecommunications technology, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, upon Joseph Strauss. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Faculty Senate and the Board, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Sister. First, I have to become one of you students. <laughs> Madam President, Vice Chancellor, Chairman of the Board, Professor Forbes, distinguished members of the university, fellow graduates, parents, and guests. It is indeed an honor to receive an honorary degree in the city where I and my family lived since the entire beginning of my professional life. This recognition to a large degree can be attributed to colleagues from whom I learned so much at Bell Northern, Nortel, and JDS Uniphase, companies where I spent my entire career. My appreciation goes to my co-founders at JDS Vitel, JDS Uniphase, Bill, Phil, and Gary, and many friends and many colleagues. Some of these colleagues are still continuing the legacy of early beginnings. This country recognizes Canada with its infinite potential, the country I love, a country which allowed me to follow my dreams when I arrived here in 1968. How much the world has changed since I arrived in Ottawa in 1974. At that time, fiber optics was only an emerging field with remote applications to telecommunication industry. Key developments at Nortel, product developments at JDS Uniphase, 
have contributed greatly to growth of internet in early 1990s. Regrettably, Bell Norden and Nortel are no more. Who would have imagined in those days that these companies, which seeded so many startups in the city and acted as a great incubator, would not be around by uh, 2001? There will be many studies and books analyzing the demise of Nortel. Perhaps uh, management theories of creative destructions will provide answers. The ability to discard the old in favor of unanticipated new. There is a definite lesson to be learned. The need to adapt is paramount in navigating rapidly changing technological environment. Five years ago, I had the privilege of receiving an honorary degree at the University of Ottawa. At that time, in my address to graduates, I spoke about the adoption of, adoption of internet as a life-affecting phenomenon, impacting how we receive information, how we communicate, and how we conduct business. Specifically, I stressed that the internet would become a great equalizer of opportunities and information sharing. I stand here today in awe how much the internet has since changed our lives. The much discussed topic these days is the notion of social networking, the use of internet to share views, ideas, and collaborative concepts, all on various platforms which have emerged recently in the past several years. Facebook, as means of communications, has almost 500 million users since its inception six years ago, a staggering growth in itself. YouTube is another broadband phenomenon. According to statistics, users upload more videos in 60 days than the entire TV production in the first 60 years of its existence. Twitter is another rapidly growing networking site. I'm sure that uh, maybe the several here in the audience who may be tweeting today why I'm supposed to provide some pearls of wisdom or uh, maybe I could just simply blabbering here. But uh, the message in 2005 was uh, about internet and the broadband revolution. The great debate today is how to deploy social networking and social networking sites for benefit of users and for the common good. On the one hand, uh, the benefits are indisputable. On the other hand, there are some views that social networking sites and uh, recently made statements claim that the corresponding devices on which information is exchanged, in fact, detract, divert, and are a form of entertainment rather than being a form of and tool of empowerment. Jaron Lanier, a software guru, in a book entitled You Are Not a Gadget, it's a good book actually to read, argues that social networking sites and social networking technologies lock in participants to a lowest common denominator with subsequent loss of personality, individuality, creativity, and expression of personal humanity. Nicholas Carr, in his book, The Shallows, What is Internet do Doing to Our Brains, argues that the use of net has led to a loss of concentration with the consequent impact on long-term memory and on decision-making processes. Yet, I don't think we can stick our hand in the sand. We can't afford to be the Luddites. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and many other social networking sites are going to be here, and they're going to stay here. They are not going to go away. In fact, history demonstrates so well that new technologies and corresponding applications always present elements of good and bad. The challenge is, and continue will be, exploiting these new platforms for the benefit of the society as a whole with the new methods of collaboration, learning, business application, and many other processes which we can't envision today. 
I strongly believe that despite all, the society will arise to the challenge of preserving its own humanity. <laughs> this is the task you, graduates, are going to face every day on a daily basis going forward. The university is uh, given you, provided you with excellent education. Your time here is prepared with the ability to discern and determine the proper use of emerging technologies for your own benefit and for the benefit of society. I have full confidence that with the knowledge you have acquired, you will meet the challenges ahead. Yet there will be times when you will ask yourself, what is the right decision? What is the right path to follow? Edwin Abbott, in one of my favorite books called Flatland, written more than 100 years ago, would say, and I am just paraphrasing, just lift your head. There is another world there to discover. There is another dimension to see. There is another dimension there to explore. This is exactly what you should do. This is exactly what I strongly suggest you do when you find yourself at a crossroad. Just lift your head and look around. Keep an open mind. Try to see the problems from different vantage points. Let these problems become opportunities instead. Observe the vistas new opening in front of you and see the new dimensions appearing. You will find the right path on with innovative ideas and creative solutions. Carlton University has given you the tools. They are at your disposal. Use them wisely and use them to the fullest extent because you graduates, I'm considering myself one of you today, we are definitely not a gadget. Humanity beckons. Live up to it. You have a great responsibility. Good luck and good journey. Thank you.